today on Dr. Phil. I hate coming home to see a beached whale. He feels tricked. After we got married, she's a different person. He says this is bait and switch. Repulsed. You said, when I look at her, I am totally disgusted. And unappreciated. Women want to be around me because I'm good looking, I'm romantic. I don't understand why she doesn't think I'm a catch. You think calling her a beached whale might take the sizzle out of you? Let's do it. Show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Wilson, take it. I'm going to get you the help that you need. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. of you are married and remember your anniversary date? Huh? I got my hand up. Your wedding is supposed to be a fairly eventful day. It's full of love, laughter, joyful memories, right? I mean, that's the whole thing. Well, my first guest, Ben, had this to say about his big day. I don't remember the date that we got married because I was so not into it. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, what the bleep am I doing? <laughs> well, the wedding was just six months ago. And Ben's list of complaints about his new wife, Kelly, is already a mile long. Take a look. When I look at Kelly, I feel disgusted and grossed out. I don't even go anywhere with Kelly because I don't even want anybody to see me with her. I'm embarrassed to be around Kelly because she's gained so much weight. And Kelly's gained about 80 pounds. It grosses me out when I watch Kelly eat. She just kind of shovels the food in and it's all business. It's feeding time. Her thighs are so big, she doesn't have a walk. It's not even a walk, it's a waddle. She has rolls on her. It almost looks like she has boobs in the front and boobs in the back. I hate coming home after a long day to see a beached whale on the couch. When I think about Kelly, I think, man, what have I done here? What have I done to deserve this? Why, why do I have this? I mean, really? 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 Ben says Kelly pulled a bait and switch after he says she trapped him and forced him into marriage. Now, Ben says after the paperwork was signed, Kelly completely changed, and she changed for the worse. Take a look. Before Ben and I were married, he was lots of fun. Kelly was so easygoing and affectionate. After we'd been together six years, I felt it was important to get married because I wanted to set a good example for my son. Kelly told me that if I didn't marry her, she was going to take her son and leave. I did not give Ben an ultimatum about marriage. Our wedding day was absolutely perfect. I was happy. He was happy. I was walking down the aisle when we got married, and I remember thinking to myself, I didn't want to get married. It was a waste to me. Ben and I have been married just about six months. My wife, Kelly, has pulled a complete bait and switch on me after we've gotten married. Ben's become a different person. He just seems like I can't ever make him happy. She's become a wet mop, no personality. She doesn't laugh, she doesn't talk, she doesn't do anything. I'm completely miserable. Ben makes me feel worthless. Ben feels that I do not provide for him sexually or emotionally. Ben has said he hates me. He may as well just rip my heart out of my chest. Kelly wants to control and tell me how to do everything. It makes me cringe to refer to Kelly as my wife. I feel like Ben has fallen out of love with me. After being married to Kelly for two months, I started talking to other women online. I found a lady online and I met her. I felt like we really connected. She understood me, I understood her. We had a lot of the same interests. I started thinking about my son. My fear was that Kelly was gonna take my son and I was never gonna get to see him again. So I completely cut off this other woman. I've never spoke to her again. A few days after that, the woman that I had been talking to online showed up at our house. When I heard the knock on the door, I just thought it was somebody selling Girl Scout cookies. 
I flipped out, and then I closed the door in her face. Kelly freaked out. I was just floored. I have lost all trust with Ben. I blame Kelly for all of this. If she'd been a wife and known how to please a man and take care of a man, I wouldn't have had to explore other possibilities. Ben blaming me for cheating is ridiculous. This is all her fault because she's fake. Kelly was one person when we were dating. After we got married, she's a completely different person. I did what any man would do if he was in my situation. Okay, well, I, I want to ask you why you're putting up with this. But I, I'll get to that in a minute. In the meantime, I want to talk to him. Okay. You know, I think everybody does what they do for a purpose. If you say certain things, you say them because you want a certain result. I, I have some of your quotes. You said, when I look at her, I am totally disgusted by her. I think, this is really my wife? That's a statement of yours. Yes. What is your purpose? She's <clears throat> just not the person that, that I married. She that just... wasn't what I asked you. I didn't ask you who she was or wasn't. I said, why did you say that? What was your purpose? What was your desired result when you said that? You said it to us, so right. you want us to know what? You want us to understand what? How I feel. That How you're, I feel about it. But that she's I'm... just beneath you. She's beneath you. You're better than it's that, it. right? You said, this is really my wife? Because you're better than that, right? You should have a, yes. a hotter wife. You should have a, a, a better yes. looking wife. Yes. Right? Yes. And you wanted us to know that. Yeah. OK. You said, she is all business when she eats. I'd probably lose a finger if I put it near her plate when she eats. <laughs> what was your purpose in, in saying that? Just to explain how I feel about it, I'm, about her weight, about, about the weight gain. You, you find her disgusting, right? Sometimes, yes. You said the Olive Garden is her favorite place. I can't go there anymore with her because it's blank disgusting to watch her eat. He, he doesn't think much of, of you, the way you look or behave, but he's pretty proud of the way he turned out. Absolutely, yes, he is. He says, I hate coming home to see a beached whale on the couch eating fast food after a long day of spending my money. <laughs> Charming. It sounds about right, yeah. Yeah. What, um, and I'll, I'll give you some of the statements <clears throat> he said about himself here in just a second, but what do you think about what he's saying about you? It's just pure hate, pure hate. That's, there's no other word for it. He says, I think marriage sucks. I would never do it again. If I get divorced, marriage is just horrible. He just felt like we should date for the rest of our lives and raise our son together without any, any marriage, any commitment at all. He says this is bait and switch, that you were one way when y'all were dating that you were fun and that you were energetic and that you liked having sex and all of these things were going on that were positive. But then once the courting phase was over, you said, okay, I got the fish in the boat. I don't have to perform anymore. I can just gain weight, be lazy, be slovenly, put no effort in it, no sex, no nothing. That's what he says you did. Right. What do you say? I disagree. Um, the weight has changed, yes, but it's also been a product of my son and then additional weight gain from that, not losing it from when I had our son. But other than the weight change, I don't feel that I've changed. Uh -huh. You don't think you've changed? No, I don't. How, how could you not when he demeans you in this way? You just get numb to it. You just, you just go through day to day, and you don't realize what your life is. You ju you're just numb. Yeah. What I have to offer other women is, is the whole package. Ben's ego, he acts like he's superior to people. I have all this to offer, but the, the reality of it is my wife, she has nothing. Unless you count laying on the couch. And later. That makes me sick to my stomach. That's disgusting. You're talking about it like he ordered the wrong thing for lunch. I mean, honestly, I want to I get up and just 
knock him out of the chair. Well, we've heard what he thinks of you. Let's hear what he thinks about himself. Ben says women love him. <laughs> they do. He, he says they, they, they just love him. Take a look. Ben thinks he's extremely special. Women want to be around me because I'm good looking. I take good care of myself. I'm sensitive, caring, and romantic. What I have to offer other women is, is the whole package. If I meet another woman somewhere, I'll flirt with them. I wink at other girls if, if I'm talking to them or if I want to get their attention. Ben doesn't flirt with women in front of me, but I know behind my back he's a totally different person. I flirted in front of Kelly once, and, and that was a big mistake, so I... I... <laughs> Ben's ego, he acts like he's superior to people. I have a really high self-worth because of who I am. I have this plate that's full of so many delicious things to give to somebody, and, you know, here I'm stuck with this cardboard chicken laying on the other plate beside of me. Ben thinks he's better than me and the majority of people. I have all this to offer, but the, the reality of it is my wife, she has nothing. Unless you count laying on the couch. Okay, fair statements? Yeah, yeah, they're fair. <laughs> yeah. So how, how do you feel about all this? Because, I mean, you're seeming pretty timid right now, but you were pretty bullish about it when you were talking about it before. I mean, own it. Hell, if that's how you feel, own it. We, you got to be real out here. Tell me what you think. I just, sometimes I, I feel like I deserve better. That's all. I, I work all day. I, I work... Uh, 14, 15, hell, there's been times I've, I've put in uh, 22 hours at work. I've come home and, and I get nothing. She, I don't get a hug, I don't get a kiss. I, I've tried talking to you, you won't talk to me. You, you'd rather just go in the other room. I, I don't get it. So you think you got cheated? In, in a way, yes. I mean, we, we used to be best friends and, and I, I don't know what happened. We're not. We're, we hate each other now. I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. D do you hate her? Sometimes, yes. You said, quote, I feel good about myself. No, I feel great about myself. I'm funny, attractive, and people like me. I have a great job. I'm stable. I take care of myself. So you, yes. you, you think you're doing a pretty good job. Yes, I think I'm doing a good job. I, 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 I take care of her. I take care of our son, our family. I provide for our house. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing, I think I'm doing a great job. Yeah. So you think you're hardworking? Yes, of course. Smart? Yes. Attractive? Charming? Yes. <laughs> Do you think you're a mental and emotional cripple? Uh, yes. Yeah, I do sometimes. Because I wonder, if, if you're so smart and charming and charismatic and all of that, why is this relationship in such a ditch? I, d I don't know. I d I've tried to figure that out myself. Well, but it I've, doesn't, I've, I've... it's not consistent with what you're saying because you're such a catch, you would think that she would be highly motivated to make you happy and be with you and all of that. Yes. So how does that compute? Let, let's I, let's figure that one out. I, I, I don't understand why she doesn't, uh, why she doesn't think I'm a catch. She doesn't think that I'm anything. She never has. Yeah. In the beginning she did and we were, it was great. And then You think calling her a beach whale might kind of take the sizzle out of her? Yeah. You think it might kind of take the sizzle out of you? Yeah, and you gained some weight when you had the baby, right? Yes. Yeah. Whose baby did you have, by the way? His. His. <laughs> you, you didn't have the baby. She... She did, yes. She had the baby. <laughs> but it was your baby. Yes. You used to be a little on the chunky side yourself, didn't you? Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. Did you know her then? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Did you tell him what a no good, slovenly, worthless human beach whale he was? Never. Never. Didn't? No, you did tell me I was overweight. 
I don't believe you that did. You did. You did. You told me several times that you thought I was overweight. Did she tell you that you were so disgusting that she could not watch you shove food in your mouth? No. No, she never said that. Yeah. Do you think you make people better by telling them how horrible they are? No, not at no, all. No, I mean, seriously, I'm no, just asking you. I, I just grew up in athletics. I kind of think about things in that way. And, I, you know, I, I never had a coach in the middle of a big game when it's time for me to make a big play to call time out and call me over there and say, just wanted you to know you're a worthless piece of <laughs> Okay? I just I wanted you to know that, McGraw, before you get back in there and run this play, I, I, just, I just wanted you to know that you are worthless. You are like gum on my shoe. You're not worthy of wearing that jersey. You're not worthy of being on that team. Now, get out there. Let, let's, let's, let's see what you do, you slime bucket. Get out there. Exactly what it is right there. Did you, is that the way they coached you? Is that the way they inspired you? Is that the way they motivated you? What the hell are you thinking? What's the matter with you? Is that how I, is that how you feel? That's exactly. You think I do, that's how I do? Yeah, you come home, you, you complain, whether it's, whether I cook dinner, whether I didn't cook dinner, whether I cook chicken, whether I cook steak. Regardless, if I'm sitting on the couch, if I'm vacuuming at the moment, I mean, there's always a complaint. <clears throat> well, we have to take a break, and I, I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm not very smart, and I don't have any motivation, and I don't know. I guess we'll just come back and see what happens. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot more going on with Ben that I don't know about. Kelly has no idea what all I've done. I was living a secret double life. In my eyes, the ideal woman, she can stand on her own, she's independent, she's stable, is a great mother, is loving and caring. She knows how to please her man. She knows how to take care of him. Take all of that and put it in with the, like, the body of Britney Spears. Not only would that be ideal, but that would just be absolutely perfect. The woman that I just described is 100% completely not Kelly. Okay, so the woman you want is just completely not Kelly. Okay, now, I I've been talking about the manner in which you've been doing what you're doing. And my insinuation... I hope it's fairly clear, is that the way, if you want something different, the way you go about it is not what you're doing. Okay? okay. Now, do you get what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Do you believe me? Yes. But you're doing it anyway, and, and, and I'm curious why. My first question, I said, people do things for a reason. What is your reason in being so hypercritical of her? Why are you doing that? I think, uh, I think some of it may be just to hurt her. Well, I want Kelly to listen to what her husband, Ben, has been up to here because he, he says you're not the woman that he wants, right? Right. Let's look at this and then we'll talk. What Kelly doesn't know is that I've been with 8 to 15 other women since we've been married. I would meet them online, talk to them, and then meet them for a drink. We would have sex. Maybe I met them two or three other times after that, and then it was done. By seeing all these women, it makes me feel like I've just been wasting the last eight years of my life with Kelly. What's your reaction to that? That makes me sick to my stomach. That's disgusting. An estimate it made it 8 to 15. That's disgusting. Nobody deserves that. What do you say to him about that? I, I don't understand how you can come home and do that and look at me and look at your son and look at yourself in the mirror and just, you run around like, like everything's normal and okay and like you, you don't have a conscience. How does it make you feel? You are so beaten down, your self-worth it is so on the floor, you're talking about it like he ordered the wrong thing for lunch. I mean, honestly, I want to I get up and just 
knock him out of the chair, but I'm not gonna do that. How do, how do you feel about it? I feel ashamed about it. I, I feel... I don't believe that. I do. I think I, you're ashamed I, I think that you're getting focused on right now for it, but I don't think you're ashamed that you're doing it. It's fun and exciting, right? Well, yes, of course. Does it bother you at all? that you're hurting her? Hurting her family. Yeah, yeah, it does. You haven't it even is, given our marriage a fair chance. He said eight to 15 women. I, it's only been six months. Yeah. I would, I'm curious that he has to kind of do a range. He says he's been with each one multiple times. So we're just talking about six months that you've been yeah, married here. I know. Um, he, he has dating profiles, right? Yes, he does. You, you found those? Yes, And, I did. and what did you do when you found them? Uh, I confronted him about it, and he said that it was a jerky thing to do, and he, had, he lied to me. He told me that he was just kind of getting on there and talking to girls for emotional support. Well, on like dating side number one, Ben claims the following. Marital status, single. Do you have children? No. Dating site, two. Ben claims the following. Introduction. Looking for some fun. Good looking, no strings attached. Looking for fun. Marital status, prefer not to say. Looking for women, couples, man and woman. Groups or couples, two women. What was, what was your target there? <laughs> what, were you, what were you looking to do? What were you hoping to get a response to? On that, just looking to meet another woman. The couples thing, I don't, that, that's not right. That, that's not right. You didn't put that on there? No, I, well, I'm, I'm sure I did, but I probably didn't pay any attention and just was running through them. I mean, you have to create the profiles just to look at people. So, I mean, I didn't. You just I accidentally didn't put too said. Much into it. You just accidentally checked couples, man, woman, groups, or couples? <laughs> Two women. You just accidentally checked that? I hate it when that happens. When I'm going through. Come on. I mean, it, why, why minimize it now? I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. You, you're, you're saying that was an accident. No, it's not an accident. It was. I was just speeding through it. Speeding through it. Yeah. Yeah. And what about that woman who rang the doorbell? The one Kelly thought was selling Girl Scout cookies, well, it wasn't cookies she was selling. I'm wasting away time with Kelly. There, there's actually women out there that appreciate me for me and are smoking hot. Three weeks ago, Kelly found out Ben was talking to another woman he had met online when she showed up on their doorstep. Now, just last night, when Ben realized he was going to have to come to the show and talk to me, he decided to tell Kelly the whole truth about that particular woman. What Ben told me about the girl that was at the front door was that he had only met her a couple times with friends at a bar, and there was nothing more. What Kelly doesn't know is that the girl that came to the door we were actually dating. We would see each other probably twice a week for six weeks. We would have sex, and it was incredible. She was giving me everything that Kelly wasn't giving me. It felt like somebody cared about me. The truth is, we had a relationship. I had feelings for her, and, and she had feelings for me, too. What I also realized by being with this other woman is, oh my god, there's other women out there that I'm attracted to physically and mentally, and I'm wasting away time with Kelly. There, there's actually women out there that appreciate me for me and are smoking hot. What's your reaction to that? I don't know. I just, I just, it makes me sick. I'm disgusted. I, 
he keeps making this big ordeal about my weight. And I mean, since our marriage, it's maybe gone up 10 pounds. It's not that big of a change since when we beginning to date. Yeah, it's changed, but he has a lack of respect for me. He has a lack of respect for himself, a lack of respect for his son. That's not true. That is true. That is not true. How is that not true? I don't, it, I have complete respect for our son. Do you fight in front of your son? Yes. Uh -huh. Are you turning away from your wife to someone else in this marriage and thereby putting your son's base of operations in jeopardy so you can be with women that you think are hot, that tell you what you want to hear? Are you doing that? Yes. That's how much you respect your son, right? Did I get that right? If I run a red light here, stop me. No, you, you got it. Well, here's what he wants you to do. This is what he wants you to do in order to stay in the marriage. He wants you to drop at least 50 pounds. 100 would be better. <laughs> he wants you to stop wearing sweatpants, be more concerned with your appearance. He wants you to be more exciting during sex and also do it more frequently. Be more affectionate and caring. Have conversations during meals instead of focusing on eating. Spend more time playing in the yard with Ben and the son. Adopt a more active lifestyle. Take walks, ride bikes with Ben and son. Be financially independent. Be an equal partner. He wants you to be happy to see him when he gets home. I guess from these other women. Make more delicious dinners and cook more frequently. He wants you to help make sure he gets up for work on time and stop bossing him around. <laughs> now, you know, the, the truth is that many of the things that you have on the list there would be goals for betterment. There would be legitimate goals for yes. betterment. Yes. Be a reasonable question to say, you know, take better care of yourself, have a return to health, you know, take pride in yourself, commit to the marriage, get involved. All of those things are all, you know, that would be le legitimate objectives for the two of you to come to together. I, I don't have a problem with some of those things. What, what do you think? I, <clears throat> I think that's right. I, I, a lot of things that I want is just for the betterment of us and, and our son and our house, you know, our, our, our whole family. That, yeah. That's what I want. So you want legitimate things in some regards. Yes. Mm -hmm. But do you acknowledge that you're going about them in a really illegitimate way? Yes. Yes, I do. And I keep asking you why, and you keep not telling me. Do you want out of this? Well, I just want you to love me, Kelly. You haven't loved me in a long, long time. You got women knocking on your door. How do you bounce back from that? I don't think you can. I have a list of things that Kelly needs to change. Kelly needs to be more affectionate, more caring. She's just got to be a better person. Ben needs to take responsibility for the damage he's done in this relationship. Kelly needs to be way more attractive. Kelly needs to lose at least 50 pounds, but 100 pounds would be ideal. What I really need for Ben is to accept me for who I am and not treat me like I'm just a disposable person in his life. We need to have sex more than once a month. We need to have sex like four times a week. I need Ben to support me emotionally. If nothing changes immediately after being on the show, I will file for divorce. Ben feels like he's done nothing wrong. From my point of view, I'm, I'm good. I don't, I don't need to change. It's, it's Kelly that needs to change. Do you want out of this? Sometimes I do, yes. Well, you do or you don't. Do you want out of this? I mean, are you just here because no, no, the son I, I don't. is involved? I don't want out of this. I, if the son wasn't it. involved, would you be gone? Yes. Yes, I would. So what do you want? When I thought it was just he had possibly slept with the girl that came to our door, I wanted to power through and work things out for our family. Now that I know that there's a, a range of 8 to 15, how do you bounce back from that? I don't think you can. So at this point, I don't see things going forward. Mm -hmm. If 
if you just read his list, you know, some of these things you could each say about the other and you would say, those are reasonable objectives for a marriage. Yes. But then you mix in the fact that you're saying the things that you're saying to her and about her. That constitutes, without question, verbal and mental abuse. Then you add to the fact that you got women knocking on your door that you've had a sexual relationship with and an emotional relationship with, and that's one of over a dozen. That kind of um, throws things into a bit of a quandary, doesn't it? Yes. I just, I just want you to love me, Kelly. You haven't loved me in a long, long time. What happened? What stopped? Cheating. No, before that. Before that. <laughs> it's the constant. It stops, it stops it's, before. No, it's the constant beat downs and, and letting me know that I'm doing everything wrong constantly. Nothing's ever good enough. Do you have any level of insight into your ownership here? No, no. So you think everything that you've done is in reaction to her shortcomings and therefore justified? That she's driven you to these other women. She's driven that. you to be hypercritical. She's driven you to this level of frustration where anybody would react the way that you're reacting. Is that yeah, how you that, see that's, it? That's, that's what I said, yeah. Where, where, where do you find these girls, by the way, these 8 to 15 women? Uh, all over. D do they know you're married? No. So you're lying to them? Yes. If you're lying to her and you're lying to them, what makes you think you're not lying to yourself? I don't know. I... Well, our tweet people are um, interested here. Marianne says, wow. You are the hottest man I have ever seen. <laughs> said nobody watching this. Uh, Janet Fuller said, I wish this man was half as good looking as he thinks he is. Tina M. Cummings says, she could lose over 100 pounds easily. Just dump him and flush. <laughs> So obviously, the women here don't see this the way you do. Right. Uh, look, I, I'll, I'm going to tell Ben and Kelly what I think needs to happen in this relationship next. I'm going to be very specific. I'm going to put verbs in my sentences, and no one is going to wonder what I think when I'm through. We'll be right back. I feel like Kelly's using me. Kelly doesn't work, she doesn't help pay the bills, she doesn't clean. It was Ben's idea for me to stay at home with our son and now he acts like I'm lazy. I would love for Ben to spend a week in my shoes taking care of the house and our son. I think Kelly just looking for a free ride. Kelly and I argue a lot here recently in front of her son. I, I try not to, but she has no self-control. Next thing I know, she's yelling and screaming, cuss words at the top of her lung in front of her son. Our son will get in between us, or whoever's yelling the loudest can push him and tell us to stop yelling. Just the other day, our, our son yelled out, Dad, you're a cheater. My heart just it dropped. He probably heard me say it. That's too much responsibility for him at four years old. I wish we could be better parents for the sake of our son. Ben says the only reason that he has stuck around with Kelly is because of their son. He thinks she would say the same thing, but Kelly says she worries that their constant fighting is taking a toll on their four-year-old son, and of course it's taking a toll on the four-year-old son. You get that, right? That's why children have often said they'd rather be from a broken home than live in one because of all of the turmoil and the emotional barren nature of what's going on. And the thing that bothers me most for you is I asked him if he had any insight to his ownership and accountability in this, and he said flat out no. Some of it is my fault. A lot of it is. <clears throat> but I've, I've tried. 
Kelly. I really have. We've been married six months, it, it, and it, you've slept with eight to 15 people. When, when have you had time to try? I'm looking at you, and, 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 and you're shaking your head like, Th th these people just don't get it. They just don't get. They just don't get it. I have tried to talk to her. I mean, they're talking about the things that I've said. That okay, I probably shouldn't have said those things. But aside from that, I've tried to talk to her. I've said, "Come on, let's do better. Come on, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this." And they just don't seem to get that. Doctor Phil's missing that. The audience is missing that. Everybody's missing that. This isn't me. It's her. She won't do anything. If she would just try, it would be better. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah, that's am what I, I'm... That's, that's am, what am I've I reading been you right? off, yeah. Am I reading you right? Here that's you how are, you feel. You that's how you feel. Okay, yes, give me her point of view right quick. You are Kelly. Tell me Kelly's point of view. He's beating me down. He, he's, he's a liar, a cheater. He's, ru he's ruining, our, ruin our, ruining our family. He's a piece of Go ahead, keep going. He's... Hey, come on, give it a voice, keep going. You're hurt, keep going. He is. He's hurtful, he's mean, he's spiteful. He doesn't care, he doesn't have any feeling. Go ahead and say it. He's betrayed me and he's betrayed our son. He's betrayed our family. I betrayed everybody. I'm sorry, Kelly. So is it time to shut this whole thing down or is there a chance to turn it around? Um, there's a readiness test I want all of you at home to take if you're thinking about it. We'll talk about that, and I'm going to tell these folks what I think when we come back. <laughs> Kelly, um, you have a decision to make here. Yes. I understand that your self-worth is damaged. I mean, if we're going to be honest here, a big part of the problem about why what he says is so hurtful is that you agree with a lot of it. Yes. And so it really hurts to have somebody point that out. Yeah. The first thing that has to happen here is you got to get Kelly back. Yes. You got to get Kelly back. And to do that, you got to take some pride in yourself. You got to decide, you know what? I'm going to stand up because whatever else happens, I'm going to be there for my child. And in order to take care of my child, I have to take care of his mother. Yes. And that needs to start right now, today. Okay? Yes. And I'm going to help you do that. I am going to help you by getting you some professional help individually. <laughs> I'm going to get you a nutritionist. I'm going to get you an exercise physiologist. I'm going to get you a team that is going to take care of you and get you to have a return to health mentally, emotionally, and physically. Thank you. Okay? That's what you need to do. And whenever you make a decision about what to do with your life and family, make it from a position of strength. Don't make it from a position of weakness. Yeah, I agree. You? <laughs> um, I, I, I think you screwed the pooch here. <laughs> Your coping has been very immature. Y you have legitimate concerns about your marriage, but you've had illegitimate ways of dealing with them. And your insight is, is real low, which goes along with the immature choices of going out and sleeping with 15 women. I'm going to offer you some individual help with that if you want it. 
Will you take the help if I arrange it yes. for you? Yes. You need it. I'm telling you. I know. You're, you're going to be a father. You, you, need, you need that help. Uh, there's a divorce readiness test. I'm going to put it on drphil.com. So I really appreciate you doing that. Uh, also, I want to say thank you to our team at Doctor On Demand. Uh, Doctor On Demand is an app that Jay and I have created that lives on Google Play in the App Store. And it allows you to go face to face with a Doctor On Demand right over your smartphone. And we use it here at the show to talk about and clear medical issues that we have with some of our guests along the way. So I, I want to thank our team at Doctor On Demand as well. We'll see you next time. Thanks for being here. Today on Dr. Phil, no one was prepared You're a cop. for this shocking revelation. And you are a heroin addict. Heroin? You have no idea, as your dad, how much hurt that just caused. She deceived her family. Anybody that will use a mother's love to get drugs, that's terrible. Now comes the moment of truth. Should I thrown in the towel? I want you to pick the towel back up, because you're going to need it. Let's do it. If we're going to do something here that matters, then we got to deal with the truth. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. If I can help get this family back on track, are you willing to do that? Ready, three, take. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Well, for those of you at home, we shoot the show out here in California, in Los Angeles. And when you think of our neighboring Orange County, California, you immediately envision pristine beaches, sprawling hills, layered with beautiful and immaculate homes filled with picture-perfect families, right? Well, my first guests live in this beautiful community and fit the image and facade that comes with living there. But their life is far from perfect. If you were to see the way we live, you would think that our lives were pretty much perfect. From the outside, we look pretty much like the perfect family. Tiffany's had a drug problem uh, with Oxycontin for about four and a half years. I honestly thought she had beaten the Oxycontin addiction. Being a police officer and knowing that my daughter engages in illegal activities, such as using illegal drugs, is very embarrassing. Tiffany's been to rehab numerous times, and unfortunately, each time she's failed. No parent likes to admit the fact that they're, they may have a child that's addicted to drugs. Tiffany has a problem when she's using the drug that she turns into two different people. She's like, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. She'll be talking to you fine, and then she'll turn around to somebody else and pretty much just rip their head off. I'm fed up with Tiffany. I, we've tried everything we can to give her what we can afford to give her. One of my worst fears is coming in and finding Tiffany dead. Look, th there comes a point, Ken, Susie, you guys love this girl, right? I mean, this is your daughter, yes. and, and you love her, and she has had a rough go. She's made some bad choices, and she has to own all of those choices. But I want to be very real about what happens when we're dealing with somebody with a drug history. It doesn't happen in isolation. You are not responsible for her doing drugs. You're not responsible for her doing drugs. That's not what I'm saying at all. But when you have a, a young person with this kind of history, they don't do it in a vacuum. They do it with their family around them, and your reactions have contributed to it, either positively or negatively. And I want you, before we even start, before we even talk to her, I want you to grade your own papers. If you had this to do over again, Ken, what would you do differently? I think if I had to do it all over again, I'd probably put more of an emphasis or focus in keeping my first marriage, obviously, together, um, or staying married to Susie back years ago when I made the choice to leave. Um, today, I think, over the course of the last four or five years, I've made choices in terms of probably um, enabling her to, to do things that, that she shouldn't be doing, and that's by financially supporting her in ways that I probably shouldn't, um, giving her money, buying her car, and uh, just a host of other things like that, I suppose. When you say that you have enabled her, that's kind of a buzzword everybody uses, but you get <laughs> what that means is by you financially giving her money, 
particularly on the heels of her crashing in an effort to get her back up, that you are empowering her to self-destruct. Do, do you get that? that yes. Because you say, well, but I mean, she's in the, she's in the ditch here. I got to get her out of the ditch. No, mm-hmm. it's in that ditch that she may face the fact that she has to make different choices. But if you come along and she totals a car, for example, mm-hmm. and you buy her a new one, then listen, kids learn what they live. That's a bad fact, right? And, and you thought she was completely clean until we called you and said she had written us and said that she wasn't actually clean. Right. So how how did you miss this? Has she been out of your orbit? Has she been away from you? Actually, she had just been in a a rehab center, and she checked herself out. She wanted to come home because she was hurting so bad with a migraine headache, and the facility wouldn't give her aspirin. She wanted just a Tylenol or something for the headache, and they would not give her the aspirin. So, So that's the story she told us. That, that's what I think. I don't know any different than that, but that's what I thought. Okay, let, let's assume that's true, and I think that's complete crap. But, okay. So, uh, I mean, let's, okay. but, let's, but let's assume for argument's sake it's true. Mm-hmm. So she checks herself out AMA. Mm-hmm. Um, so these professionals, you know, doctors, nurses, psychologists, psychiatrists, addiction specialists, all, they don't know anything. She knows she needs an aspirin. Right. So she's leaving. And she comes where? She calls me to come pick her up. And you? And I picked her up. And take her? Back to her boyfriend's house. Okay. So you're her taxi cab. Well, she basically told me if I didn't come, he would come when he got off work. That was just the point. Did you think about calling him and saying, hey, we don't need to be doing this. She needs to stay right where she is and not have a ride. This this crisis may pass. No, I'm sorry. I didn't think about that. Okay. And listen, I, I, I get it. I'm a parent and now a grandparent, and I, I get how hard it is, which is why I'm talking to you first. Ken, Sir. you say you've gone into $40,000 debt for things, knowing that she was an addict. Uh, $15,000 on dental school after she left rehab the first time, right? She's never completed a rehab, right? She's left early. Mm-hmm. Okay, car accident. You suspected drug use, and I think that would be a pretty good guess. And she totaled a car? Yes, sir. Um, so there's a good chance she was driving under the influence. Yes. Fortunately, she didn't kill herself or anybody else. Yes. But she totaled the car. Yes. And so you just bought her a new one. Yes. You know, when you hear it like that, it sounds, when you put it in, you it connect does. the dots. Even, even with the headache thing, you know what? I, yeah. never, I never doubted her for a second. I, really, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. That's why we're talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Because I, I can tell you when she's lying, it's when her lips are moving. I know that. Okay. Yeah. Know. Now, she was going to be prosecuted for writing bad checks, so you bailed her out. Right? Yes. And what do you suppose she was doing that money she's writing bad checks for? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You still financially support her car insurance, cell phone, health insurance, I mean, all, all of these things. And then she comes and says, you know, I need money for hair and nails and that sort of thing, and you give it to her. That's what I mean. Enabling's kind of a, you know, it doesn't sound real bad. You say it real fast. But what it actually amounts to is you've got somebody out here that is on self-destruct. Right. And in order to continue that self-destruction, she needs funding. And so y'all make sure she has it. And I have to tell you, that is no different than if you went and bought it for her and gave it to her. Because that's what you're doing. You're, you're just not doing the pickup, but you're doing the financing. And she calls you out of rehab and says, come get me. Mom, come on. Why do you suppose she called you? Because she knew I'd come and get her. You reckon that she's learned that she's got you under control. You will, you will do what she wants you to do. Absolutely. So that has to change. There's nothing that I can do to help your daughter, who we're going to meet here in a minute. There's nothing I can do to help her if you guys continue to do what you're doing. If you do what you're doing, I might as well thank you for coming, wish you the best, refer you to a, a good funeral home, and send you on your way because she will die and you will be guilty in your own minds and hearts for the rest of your life simply because we've had this one conversation. You didn't choose the drugs, 
but you're either going to be part of the problem or part of the solution. I want you to be part of the solution. We'll meet Tiffany after the break. I'm here with Ken and Susie. They are divorced now, uh, but they are the biological parents of a, a beautiful daughter, Tiffany. Um, she has a history of drugs. Now, they believe that she has been okay and off of drugs until she contacted us. She wrote in to us and said, look, I'm, I'm living a lie here, and I, I, I need help coming clean confessing where I am, talking about what the truth is. Um, so let's bring Tiffany out so you can meet her and add her to this conversation. <laughs> Tiffany, Dr. Phil, how are you? Have a seat right here. Um, you wrote me a letter. Why now, why me? Because um, I watch your show, like, every day. Um, and I've seen you help other families. And I didn't really know what else to do. So you know I take this very seriously. Well, Tiffany said that she's been lying to her parents for the past year. Uh, she says that she is ashamed of where she is and what she's doing. Let's take a look. My parents have no idea that I'm using heroin. I'm really scared to tell them. I switched from Oxycontin to heroin. My body is sick without heroin. I've been to rehab three times. All three times, I didn't finish the program. Right now, I'm spending up to $100 a day on heroin. All my money goes to drugs. I'll be borrowing money or getting money from my boyfriend saying I need gas. I pay no bills. My boyfriend pays for our housing, and my dad paid for my car and my cell phone. Using drugs has made me become a liar. In order to get money from my mom, they'll say I need gas or money to eat. I've stolen money from my dad. I've stolen 20 bucks here, 20 bucks there. I feel like I live a completely double life. In the morning, I drive all the way to the methadone clinic to get the methadone, and then I drive to get heroin, and then I try to make it to work by 9.30, but I have to get that just to get through my day. I am gonna drive real quick um, right now to go meet um, so I can pick up. Uh, some heroin. On my lunch break, I go out to my car to use heroin. I don't even eat lunch on my break. I feel guilty, and I feel like I'm wasting my life. I feel like I'm not ever going to accomplish anything. I'm so, 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 so scared, and I never thought my life would end up this way. I don't want to do this anymore. It's always like this, running around and back and forth. I have to go get something just to make it you know, through the day. So, Dad, share what's in your heart. I'm sorry. Really? I can't even talk. So I just talk through the tears. It's all right. Heroin? Oh, man. I don't, know, I don't know what to say. And honey, that just, that just, you have no idea, as your dad, what, what that makes me feel, or how much hurt that, 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 just, that, that just caused. You know, and some of the things that you just said, regarding your stealing and, and, and doing what you're doing on your lunches. Just living a lie like that. But half the time in the morning when I go, I just do it to feel normal. Like, it's not fun anymore. It's not. Like, 
people think like, oh, doing drugs, fun, friends, partying. It's not, it's my survival. It's to function. It's to feel normal, to go be able to take a shower and to go to work and make it through the day without being really, really sick. See, you know, and I don't understand, Dr. Phil, where she's coming with feeling normal and stuff. When you get sick, when you've done the detox a couple times, that's what you're talking about? Yeah. But yeah, you, you, you failed rehab twice because you've chosen to take yourself out of rehab? Really? I didn't give enough time for... It takes, like, doctors have told me that it takes, like, up to a month to feel normal for your body to feel normal again. And I gave in because I just wanted to feel normal. <sighs> <clears throat> what do you want to say? I'm, I'm in shock. I didn't know that she was still doing this. I thought she was fine. I mean, she got a job working at another dentist office not too long ago. Right when she got out of the rehab facility. Yeah. She went right away and got a job so she would pacify us, make us think that things were okay. And she hasn't come around my home because of a relationship or lack of with her stepmother. And, and that's I was why. told I was not welcome in your home. You're, you're not when you're under okay. the influence or using no, drugs. But I was, you guys thought I was clean and I was told I was not welcome in your home. And you did not know that I was using. Well, I knew the other day after you... The other your, day. Yeah. No, I was told I was not welcome in your home when you guys thought that I was clean. No, but when you came to the home and you weren't, you were told you weren't welcomed, it was because how you acted at the house and disrespected. I'm not talking about on Sunday. Okay. I'm talking back when you disrespected Christy by yelling at her in our home and it acting the way you did. It wasn't just me. Regardless, that's what you're, you, you okay. can't come into our home and talk to Christy like that and expect that you're gonna have open arms when you come through the door. This is the problem. They think that we have family issues because of the drugs, just because of the we do. No. They're, 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 that's a cop out, Tiffany. No. Yes, because when you're when you're not under the influence and you're 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 a pretty young girl that's sober, we never have issues or problems. Other than you're gonna, I know you're gonna resort back and you're gonna say it's because because we've uh, always had issues with my stepmother before drugs. Are you kidding me right now? Are you, are you kidding me when you said that you haven't had a relationship with Christy before? On and she's off, helped you on detox. And off. Yeah, it's on when you want it on to be on, and it's off when you're, when you're having issues. That's not true. It I'll tell true. you what, we're going to take a super quick break here, and we're going to add the stepmother, Christy, and we're going to talk this out and figure out whether there's a plan we can move forward here when we come back. I definitely think my stepmom uses my drug use to keep me out of the family. Grow up, Tiffany. If you're not going to care for yourself, then no one's going to care for you. I feel like my dad chooses my stepmom and my half brother over me all the time because he got remarried. And even before I was on drugs, they never would call me. Unfortunately, because of the drugs, we don't have a relationship like we should have. I lived with my dad for a little while. He basically just said, you know, the only way you can live here is if you're clean. He would drug test me. So he knew, and he kicked me out. Tiffany's addiction has had a major impact on my relationship with my current wife. It says on this page that I'm supposed to, at this age, give her a car and pay her cell phone and pay her insurance and make sure she has money in her pocket all the time. My dad tells me all the time, oh, you need to be stronger, and what you're doing is stupid, and you're just weak-minded. I love Tiffany like no tomorrow, but I don't want her in my home unless she's clean and sober. She needs to be locked down. She needs to be taken away from her friends and deal with her issues. Well, Tiffany's stepmother, Christy, says she does not want Tiffany in her family's life and says, and I quote, it's a sigh of relief knowing Tiffany is not walking through my door to visit. Take a look. Me and my stepmom do not get along at all. I feel like my dad has changed so much. My stepmom has changed him. It makes me hate her. My dad has helped me a lot financially. But if I go to his work to have lunch with him, he won't tell her. Like, it'll be a secret from her because she'll get mad or get jealous. I feel that Ken favors Tiffany over myself, and it's hurtful. When it comes to Tiffany, Ken will put everything on hold for her. 
I definitely think my stepmom uses my drug use to keep me out of the family. Grow up, Tiffany. If you're not gonna care for yourself, then no one's gonna care for you. I believe in tough love, and she doesn't like that at all. I think Tiffany has been at the point where she will pretty much do anything that she needs to do to get her drug. Yeah, hate's a big word. You just said, I hate my stepmother. Do you hate Christy? No, I don't hate her. Well, why <clears throat> did you say that? Because I'm hurt. I feel like I don't have a dad anymore because of her. Christy, what do you think about the relationship you have with Tiffany? Is it strained? Yes. You're, you're happier when she's not there because of what she brings, what yes. she introduces, and what is that? This is the thing. Hey, let me ask Christy. What, what, what does she bring into your home that makes you glad when she's not there? Um, just Ken and I will argue and fight um, negative. Um, it's just not a happy, for the most part, it has not been a happy situation when she's around. Do you resent your father because he divorced your mother mm. and left you? He traded one family in for another. Even before my drugs, she has said, I am jealous of you and your father's relationship because me and my dad weren't close growing up. This was when I was like 14, no drugs. Okay. So we were close. Like, I was the only girl. We have a different... We're going to have a different relationship than him and my brothers. It's different, you know? And she's always said that she's jealous of that. If I go have lunch with him, he can't tell her. One time, I was getting my nails done, and he was with me, and he got a pedicure, and he couldn't tell her. Why it's, is that? It's not that because, I can't. No, it's not that I can't fight tell with her. You, she, you can, she, she but will, it'll spark a fight. It, she, and it, you it, avoid it, the fight because she brings up valid concerns or issues about you when we're together. My giving you money. Did, did you give her money? And, and you're right. I, I have sometimes not been honest with 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 my wife Christy because of our relationship. And, and I and I and I again apologize. She she knows. I've, I've given things to you that I really shouldn't do. Both your mom and, and Christy have said, you know, why? Why, yeah, why, why are different. you doing these things for her? That she can be like, oh, I believe in tough love. Like, <sighs> I, love, Obviously, like, she's, got, she's, she's been uh, right, though. Okay. I mean. But it's like, I feel like I have a mom. I have a dad. Like, I don't need another tough person on my case every day. Like, well, well, you can be my stepmom. And she's like, I want to be your friend. The like, problem is, is that we haven't but, been, been as tough as Christy. No, but I'm not going to. I'm. Our, with our relationship, how it is, like, I didn't grow up with a stepmom, like, knowing, like, oh, my, my second mom. Like, it wasn't like that. She came into my life, and I was like, oh, say hi to your new mom. Like, my dad told me, I'll never get remarried. I'll, I'll make sure that you guys, like, say it's okay and like her and approve. And you went and got engaged and didn't tell us, okay? I remember. We're engaged, coming home. Okay, she got pregnant. The way I found out, um, I'm sleeping, and my dad comes and wakes me up. And he, this is when I was like 12, thir 13, 14, I don't know. Hey, by the way, her family is coming over today, so just a heads up, she's pregnant. Like, are you kidding me? I honestly don't remember you that. You don't remember anything, though. I do, and it hurts. You don't remember nothing. Is that your theory of why you've chosen to uh, medicate yourself? No, I don't blame that on anybody. What do you blame it on? Because that's what we're talking yeah. about here. The it's fact just... is, you are a heroin addict, and you did heroin today, correct? This morning. You've done heroin this morning, before you came here. I'll be right back. <laughs> the fact is, you are a heroin addict, and you did heroin today, correct? This morning. You've done heroin this morning, before you came here. Okay, so this has got a grip on you. If you don't do it again soon, you'll start to react, correct? If you don't have a, a, a fix before the end of the day, you're going to start... I'll be sick. You're, you're going to start getting the flu. You're going to start getting real sick. 
that's the point that we're at, guys. And you say, you know, I thought she was fine. I, I don't know if you thought she was fine or you just desperately wanted her to be fine. But she's not fine. And there's a lot of family that goes into this. Do you support her getting sober, getting clean, getting her life together? Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, here's the thing. When you're a heroin addict, you kind of lose all credibility on everything else. But when you take that away, there are going to be some family dynamics here that are loose ends and ugly. They're going to have to be dealt with, and you're either going to be part of the problem or you're going to be part of the solution. Right. And I'll promise you, if you ever, ever, ever do anything to come between this father and his daughter, it will wind up biting you really bad. He will resent you for it for the rest of his life. Because if you want a relationship with your husband, you will support his relationship with his children. And, and vice versa. I mean, you'll, you'll support her relationship with her mother. And, and you will support her relationship in, in treating his current wife with dignity and respect. Whether you like her or whether you don't, I don't know how y'all get along. I don't really know of one thing in this family that's working well right now. It's just like we're in denial here. It's just like look straight ahead and there are no problems on the sides, but there are. And if you don't think that heroin addiction is fatal, let me tell you it can be fatal. This has disaster written all over it. Do you see why I talked to you before we brought her out? Because yes, if we continue to do what we've always done, where you get into some kind of treatment somewhere or whatever, and then you decide, well, okay, I want to feel normal again. So you come up with some <laughs> excuse to walk out the door, and, and you answer that call and go get her and bring her home and just tuck her right in, and here's 60 bucks. Now go get your nails done. Mm -hmm. You saw her doing her nails on the video. Sure did. That's her doing her nails. Do, do you not resent her using you and playing you for a fool all this time? Mm -hmm. She knew you loved her. She knew you were committed to her. And she used that against you to deceive and betray you. Mm -hmm. Your mother has said, and I quote, mm -hmm. I will drop everything, and she emphasized everything, if she needs me. 100% accessible for her. I want her to know I love her. And you know that, and you use it to stab her in the back, and shame on you for doing it. <laughs> Anybody that will take something as pure as a mother's love and use it to get to drugs and betray her, that's terrible. She says, if you can't afford to eat, she will cook for you. She takes you to the methadone clinic. She, I mean, ah, oh, come on. I just, you know, that is what I think of that. That has to be over. That is the relationship you have had. It is now shut down. It is ripped in half. Because if they're not willing to do what I am asking them to do, I wouldn't touch you with a 10-foot pole. I wouldn't touch you with a 10-foot pole. Because you need somebody to tell you the truth. And the truth is, you are a spoiled brat, Missy, and they have spoiled you. And so you come out here in your self-righteous, sanctimonious way and criticize the manner in which they parent and the fact that your father deceived you. You're the biggest liar in the building. Do you get that? Don't roll your eyes and look at me. I'm telling you the truth. If, I, if there's anything I'm telling you that won't withstand challenge, then bring it on. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I'm telling you, you're the biggest liar in the building. Now, you tell me I'm wrong. I know I am. I'll be right back. You're the biggest liar in the building. Do you get that?
Don't roll your eyes and look at me. I'm telling you the truth. If, I, if there's anything I'm telling you that won't withstand challenge, then bring it on. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I'm telling you, you're the biggest liar in the building. Now, you tell me I'm wrong. I know I am. Well, then why are you rolling your eyes like some I entitled little brat? I wasn't rolling my eyes. Uh, okay. Does it seem like I know an awful lot about y'all's family? <laughs> sure does. Do you, do you know why I do? There are two reasons I know. One is, y'all have been very candid and forthcoming. And the other reason that I know so much about you is it's like looking through a picture window. It is so transparent. Lassie could figure this one out. <laughs> you buy her a car after she totals it on drugs? Dad, I, come on, you, you've got to know, when you look at that 2020 hindsight, as they always say, you look back at that, you think, you know what, I just loaded the gun and gave it right back to her, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I don't have any excuse for it other than, you know, you she's... Don't, you don't need one. Yeah. What you need, you don't need an excuse because you love her. I get that. I, I do. And, and I, I respect you all as parents. I do. Which may sound funny because I'm saying you're doing so much wrong, but your intention is good. But you are so misguided. And do you see, no matter what I was to do with her, if you continue to, oh, I'm accessible 100%, just call me, I'll pick you up hungry, let me fix you something, here's 60 bucks. You know, go do this, need a new car, here you go, no problem. Steal from me, I'll look the other way. Th there would be no reason in the world for me to do it. Right. You see, I take a very different approach to this than you do. My approach is that you call a spade a damn shovel. And I'm saying, that this is a spoiled, entitled heroin addict that expects you to bail her out and, and let her abuse herself in a way that mm -hmm. is, is life-threatening. That can't happen. It cannot happen. And if you can't come over to my side in the way this is handled, then there's no pointing us going forward. And we're there. <laughs> Trust me. On your side. Th th this is this. <clears throat> Don't know what else to do, Dr. Phil. That's why I'm here. I, th I mean, I, I think I mentioned I've thrown in the towel. I don't, I don't know what else to do for my daughter. I want you to pick the towel back up and put it around your neck because you're going to need it. You're going to need it. I, I need you. I need you. You're a cop. Yes, sir. I need you to bring the professional skepticism to this that you would if you picked up one of these people's kids. And you know what? If you love her, and I know that you do. So and no, I believe no that you do as well. I think you've come to know this child, and I think you love her. She needs to know that this is the last time around the track. That you're not going to do this with her anymore. Right. And so I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to dismiss you all right now. I, I want you guys to go back to the green room without me. And I want you to have a conversation among yourselves back there. And you're either going to come back out here and tell me that everybody's on the same page here. No more coddling this kid. She goes where she needs to go for however long she needs to go, and she has to do whatever she has to do. And let me tell you something. It ain't some 28-day wonder. And very likely, if you do what I might make available to you based on what I hear from this group when you come back, you might never, ever return to your hometown again, ever. Because that's where you do drugs. That's where you get the stuff. That's where your triggers are. That's where it happens. I'm talking about we're not going to do this just to kind of fill the square and make nice television. I'm saying you may wind up living in Eugene, Oregon, or Paris, France, I don't know, but you won't be back where you threaten your own life with drugs every day. Your life as you know it is going to change dramatically, or I want no part of this. I want no part of this if we're not going all the way. And I, so you guys, I'm not gonna waste the resources. I want you guys to go back, Bones, AJ, I want to take these guys back. We will shut this show down and let you speak as a family. And we're just going to take a big, long break until you get back.
This is it. This is the last time. This is it. We're done. We're clean. We're sober. We're going to be responsible adults and make good decisions. Right? From now on, two choices, you're going to make the right one, the good one. Right? And whatever Dr. Phil says is what you're going to do. You got to want it. Sir. You don't you want, have it? To want it? I do want it. it. Okay. Not us. Let's, do it. Let's do a group hug. Come on. Right. Love you, right? We're in agreement. We're in. Whatever we got to do. We're in. We're back. You've just been watching a couple of commercial messages for a few minutes, but we've actually been gone a pretty good while because I asked Tiffany, her biological parents, Ken and Susie, and stepmother, Christy, to go backstage and discuss whether or not they are ready, not just as uh, Tiffany, but as a family unit to do what has to happen to really give Tiffany a chance to get clean and sober once and for all. And I, I, I have to say, you know, one of the things that frustrates me most in, in this profession over the years is people that like they'll have a kid or someone that's creating a lot of problems and they'll drag them to the altar of the therapist, drop them off and say, okay, fix them and we'll be back when you call. Well, it's just not that easy. You know, no, 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 you're not gonna just drop them off. Everybody's staying. Everybody's staying because there's, a, there's more to it than just her. You're the squeaky wheel, you're making the noise, but it's about everybody. So I ask you guys to go back and sit down and see if you could redefine a family dynamic here because I can't do this if y'all are gonna sabotage me. Tell me what you have to say. We're hopeful you can give us some guidance or, or put us on a path to what, whatever we need to do to, to save our daughter. And um, she wholeheartedly has shared with us that, that she wants help. I'm just, just pleased to know that she is, is still reaching out for some, some help. And, and us as a family, we want, we want her here. And, and I feel, I'm gonna go, <laughs> and you've, you've enlightened me a lot on, on some of the, the things that I've done that I've, I've recognized that I guess I've, the car and the, the monies and, and all those things, I think uh, um, we're gonna come to grips with that as well. Now, I want you to look me in the eye and tell me, I, I said I was 100% accessible to her. Oh, 110%, I'm doing this, she's, she's done. You, you get it, I you're get tired it. of being used, it. you're tired of being manipulated, you're done. tired of her using your love as a mother against you. Done. You're, you're done. Done. No cars, no money, Done. no excuses. You're nope. through parenting out of guilt. She can live under a bridge. Because you've been parenting from guilt. Done. You're behind this 100%. Yes. You want to do this? I do. There's no leaving this time. You start making noise about leaving, we'll get a 5150 commitment. Put your ass right back where you were. <laughs> and you understand that they're now on my side. Yep. And I'm on your side. So we're all pulling for you. I have what I believe are the best people in the country to do this. Uh, Rich Women, stand up if you would. Uh, I, I've worked with Rich for a number of years. He is now. Uh, he's, he, he's part of our team here. And he guides us and, and, and gives us input on placements and where people need to be and that sort of thing because we have to be the only television show in the history of television and on the globe that does this for our guests. I mean, we, we have a 100% a resource program. Whoever comes on, to, on our show I'm never under the impression that I'm doing eight-minute cures up here. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've cured your family dynamic. What I've tried to do is be a, a compass for you, an emotional compass that gives you a wake-up call, gets your attention, and points you in the right direction. And then I'm going to provide, through their help, resources to empower you as a family to be a positive instead of a negative in this. So you're going to have to do a lot of work in her absence. It isn't just like, okay, got rid of her, woo-hoo. Right. Uh, you got a lot of work to do while she's gone. Right. And I'm gonna provide that to you at our expense, not yours. Thank you. 
And what I ask in return is you grab on with both hands and you do this. Velvet, stand up if you would. This is Velvet Mangum. She's here. Uh, Velvet is the CEO and founder of Safe Harbor Treatment Center for Women. Velvet, your facility is going to meet her on many different levels, not just detox and, and, and addiction, but all of the issues that particularly women face in dealing with this. Talk about that a little bit. Absolutely. There's a long process to recovery, and it begins with admission. And that's what this family's done today. You are burning the bridge behind you right here, as scary as that is. We've done this before. OK? All right. Deal? We'll be right back. I want to thank all of my guests today and a very special thanks to Safe Harbor Treatment Center for Women and on-site workshops. I, I really appreciate the skill that they bring to this. Look, drug addiction is a disease, but it can be controlled. It can be managed. We've got lots of resources on drphil.com. So if you're in that situation yourself or somebody you love, go there, but it doesn't get better with time. Don't put it off. Thanks for being here.